Hello and welcome to this Follow the Wire video for our OEM customers and our partners. In this session, we're going to discuss the basics of the fiber channel protocol. In the early 1990s, client-server computing was being deployed and placing mainframe computing for most applications. In the initial rollout, the storage was deployed in each server and not available to be shared, and this resulted in trapped or underutilized storage capacity across the client-server environment. Plus, it was very difficult to manage backing up the data in all these servers independently. This created the need for there to be a way to share storage and backup across multiple servers over a reliable, high-speed network. That's where Fiber Channel became relevant, using the Small Computer System Interface, or SCSI command set, for server and storage communications. Initially deployed at 1 gigabit bandwidth, the speed of Fiber Channels progressed to where we are today with 16 gigabit, 32 gigabit, and 64 gigabit bandwidths available. So why fiber channel for storage? Well, it was designed from the ground up to be a storage optimized transport. Storage devices don't deal well with inconsistent data rates like you get with say ethernet. To address this, fiber channel uses a buffer credit mechanism between devices in order to ensure in order frame delivery. Fiber channel HPAs have been designed from the start to be fully offloaded. That means all the storage IO processing is done in the HPA and doesn't burden the host CPU with its task. This can save up to 30% or more of the CPU resources. Fiber channel SANs are designed to be deployed only in high availability configurations, dual paths and redundant hardware throughout. To simplify deployment, name server technology was added to the fiber channel switches in the fabric so that when a new device is added to the network, all the other devices on the SAN are informed automatically. This saves significantly on the time to set up and deploy a SAN. Fiber channel technology is also advanced to include uh, advanced diagnostics and congestion mitigation technologies to ensure high performance and minimize administrator tasks. Let's drill down a bit on a few of these capabilities that are rather unique to fiber channel and make it the gold standard for shared storage connectivity. Here's a layout of a basic SAN dual port HPAs, a pair of switches, uh, dual controllers in the storage arrays ensure that there are two paths to all devices for high availability. If one element in the data path fails, the system will fail over automatically to the other path. As mentioned earlier, the use of buffer credits between all devices on the SAN ensures that the read-write operations between devices completes before others are started. This provides a very predictable performance profile compared to other transports. Now, data integrity is maintained by what is called zoning. The path between a host server and a storage entity is defined by zones. Only those devices in the same zone can communicate with each other. For SCSI, zoning is done between the host and the disk partition, also known as a logical unit number or LUN. For NVMe, the disk partition is known as a namespace. In this simple diagram, we can see at the top servers communicating to the SCSI array in two zones, the red and the green. The bottom server is communicating with the FC NVMe array using the blue and orange zones. Again, the zoning provides isolation between the different storage partitions, and because the fiber channel SAN is isolated from the server network, it's air-gapped, as we say, it's very secure from potential intrusion. One of the key elements in Fiber Channel is that HVAs all support storage offload. With most adapters, when a host wants to do uh, an activity, the CPU accesses the host's memory, pulls the data through the CPU where it's formatted uh, to the type of I.O. and then it's sent to the I.O. device over the PCIe bus. With Fiber Channel, when a write command is required or a read command, the, the CPU tells the HVA and the HVA fetches the data directly from the memory and puts the data into the fiber channel frame format and sends it off to the SAN. Another key feature is the name server technology used in fiber channel. The benefit here is that each switch has a table in it that contains all of the details of all of the nodes in the SAN. That way, when it comes to zoning or setting up uh, prioritization, 
everybody is aware of what is available to be connected to in the SAN. There is no mapping and masking or per port connections that need to be made like with other protocols. This greatly simplifies the deployment of the SAN and allows for a lot of automation in SAN orchestration. Now, if we look at storage today, the storage array world is transitioning from SCSI-based arrays to native NVMe arrays. The fiber channel standard allows for concurrent SCSI and NVMe communications to provide simplified integration for these next generation NVMe arrays. In this view, we have an existing SAN fabric connected to a legacy SCSI-based fiber channel storage array. Now we want to add a new NVMe storage array to the fabric. We don't have to build a new separate fabric for NVMe. These arrays connect the FC NVMe. And the good news is that most current 16 gig and 32 gig enhanced fiber channel HBAs can support concurrent communications of both SCSI and NVMe commands. Where complexity comes in is in the driver design. With Marvell QLogic fiber channel HBAs, the HBA driver supports both FC SCSI and FC NVMe today in a single driver. Competitors require customers to add a separate FC NVMe driver to support FC NVMe connectivity. This is an extra step that administrators need to take on each server in the SAN, and it's simply not required when you use Marvell QLogic HBA technology. Fiber Channel Industry and Marvell QLogic business units continue to innovate going forward. The ecosystem for 64 gig fiber channel is coming online this year with multiple sources for switching, HVAs, and most importantly, 64 gig optics. Having multiple sources and proven interoperability is a mainstay for the fiber channel industry. Marvell is working with both Brocade and Cisco to develop more intelligence in the SAN infrastructure to automatically address and mitigate SAN congestion issues. We're also working with both of these fiber channel switch vendors to support virtual machine ID in the SAN in such a way that it works with any vendor storage and still provides visibility to storage workloads at the VM level. And finally, 128 gig fiber channels already in, in the labs and in development. And like all of our other fiber channel bandwidths, it'll be backward compatible two generations. Here are the key takeaways from this video. Fiber channel is the only transport protocol that's purpose-built and optimized for server to storage connectivity. Fiber channel SANs provide secure, high availability and high performance means for connecting servers to shared storage disk arrays. And Marvell QLogic 16 gig and 32 gig host bus adapters provide more features and innovation for host connectivity to a storage network. For more information on Marvell QLogic HPA technology, go to www.marvell.com slash QLogic. And be sure to check out the other Follow the Wire videos on the Marvell YouTube channel shown here. That's it for this video. Thanks and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day.